All right, it's chopping it up with Kadar. Got to get that Jeffrey Hammonds off there. That was our guest last week on the show. Want to thank him for coming on as well, man. It was good to have Jeffrey on. I'm Perry White, of course. The big man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Roger Kadar. This is peace. Oh, okay. Yeah. Get me in tune with the 21st century. Yeah, I, I'm going to get you there. You still got a little music. Get this music down. All right, here we go. Oh, yeah, that's good. We're going to get the Jeffrey Hammonds. We're going to get it together this morning. We're going to get Rockerford on here. Yes, sir. Is he on the line? He said yes. I can't hear you, Steve. Rock? I don't hear you, Rock. Rock? Is he there? Let me text him and let him know. We live. All right, everybody. Hey, before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button as we try to get everything together, get to get through some technical difficulties and uh, get our man. Well, first of all, how was your weekend before we get uh, rock on? It's always good. I like that. Anytime I get to see you on a Monday, I know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I just text him, coach, and let him know. So we'll see. Get this thing rocking and rolling this morning. We're going to have uh, Steve Rockford uh, on this morning. And uh, have some conversations and talks with him. You and him go way back, ain't that right, Coach? Ooh, way back to 1982. <laughs> I'll I, let you tell him because he probably have more stories to tell than I do. And he's got a younger mind than me, fresher. Now, is that how? Is that the correct spelling of that? No, that's pretty close. Okay. He'll let us know. Okay. Should I, he hadn't responded yet? Okay, we're gonna keep it rolling this morning until you get through, Coach. You can get get to him on the phone or get on the line, Coach. I keep it rolling. Hey, it's a good weekend. Uh, hey, NFL. Any NFL fans out there? You had to be on the edge of your seats last night if you watched the Kansas City and Cincinnati team. Uh, that was one of my favorite teams, of course, with Kansas City. There we go. He said he could see us, but his voice won't come out. <laughs> can you do something about that? I'm gonna try again. Try again. There you go, Coach. We got Coach on the IT team. Thank you, Coach. I'm an IT? You're on the IT team. What is that? That's the technology team. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was on the phone. <laughs> You're getting me there. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting, getting you there. I'm getting the lesson. Look, look, look. I enjoy it. Uh, yes, this weekend, please. just real quick before we get Steve on, man, uh, you know, I'm a Kansas City Chiefs fan. We saw it last week. Jeffrey was trying to get on me. I didn't call him last night, but I'll probably give him a call today and talk a little noise. But the opportunity, did you watch the Chiefs and the uh, Cincinnati Bengals game last night? It was a really good game. Uh-huh. I did watch you like it. You on the, him? Yeah, that's one in the few times I don't fall. As, I didn't fall asleep mm -hmm. on game because it was entertaining. And obviously we had an interest in Jeff uh, Boros mm -hmm. because he's a uh, – you know, he led LSU to a national championship. And uh, Chase, uh, Jamar Chase. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a wide receiver that man is. But So I had a really good interest in watching it all the way, and I did. And uh, it didn't disappoint. No. It wasn't disappointed. I got to think it had good ratings. Had and to. it was able to maintain its ratings. Uh, what did you did you like that call at the end when uh Patrick Mahomes was going out of bounds and they got him flagged for a late hit and it ultimately gave KC the opportunity to kick the field goal to win the game? Uh, would you are you part of the people who say the officiating sucked because of that or was that the right call for you? It was the right call because they make that call all the time. Mm -hmm. So it was the right call. It has nothing to do with the time in the game the call was made. It wasn't the key was it was the right call to make and you. They're into the mode of protecting quarterbacks anyway. That's it. And if uh, so, uh, you know, the, the guy was a little aggressive. Uh, once, he, once some quarterback gets on that sideline, 
they ain't going back in. They're not trying to come back in. <laughs> Let them go. And you know, some people, you know, just aggressive. Mm -hmm. This football is an aggressive game. It is. And sometimes you can't stop your momentum. But you know, it was really a well officiated game. And when you had the, the our guy in the booth, the official, he said, all of the calls were legitimate calls. Mm -hmm. They were legitimate calls, you know. <clears throat> so uh, you got to appreciate that about what happened last night. I appreciate it as a Kansas City fan. Let's go. Are you going to Arizona? I will not be in Arizona. I'll be watching it. Uh, I'll be in New Orleans, actually. I'm going down for a parade, and then I'm going to come back up. You know, it's Mardi Gras season. I enjoy a good Mardi Gras parade. So I'll go down there, and then I'll be back. Uh, to possibly uh, watch the Super Bowl here. Are we good with Steve? He's on? All right, let's rock and roll. Let's bring him on. Can you hear me? We hear you good, Steve. Can't see you, but I hear uh, you. Let's do him on a split screen so we can see him and he can see us. Oh, Steve, you're so... Oh, there you go. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. Can you see us? I can see you. Okay. You can well, see him, not me. Don't worry okay. about me. I'm not him. <laughs> Good morning, Steve. I, I know what he looks like. Huh? I know what he looks like. You know what he looks like? Hey, Steve called me bright and early this morning. He's an early guy. Yeah, all right? oh, no, he early. <laughs> you know, we talk early in the morning. Well, well I learned that from Coach K Dor. <laughs> well, Steve, good morning, man. It's good to have you on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Well, talk to me about that hat first. What's up with that hat? Well, the Astros are my team. Coach Kador knows that. Uh huh. <laughs> Talk to us about it. We got what? What you mean? We, we don't. I don't he's know. He's a Texas guy. Okay. You know, I just he's from Port I grew Arthur. Up in, uh, well, Port Arthur, Texas. Yeah. And uh, I've always been an Astro fan, and uh, it's just fortunate that Dusty Baker, who's a good friend of Roger Kador, is our manager. He says, our manager. All right, y'all yeah, rocking. Yeah. <laughs> but one thing I say, Rock has a relationship with Dusty also. So uh -huh. he's not saying that, but he does have a relationship with Dusty. And uh, he's called me a couple of times when he was in Dusty's office. Uh -huh. I know he's legit. <laughs> and he's got so, a relationship with Todd Callis, uh, Todd Callis, who is the announcer for the Astros. He does the Astro game, but he also used to do Tampa. And you were down. Come on, I'm, I'm doing too much talking. Go ahead and talk, Rob. Yeah, so the, the person, Buzz, my head coach, has a really good relationship with Dusty. When he was the head coach at Marquette and Dusty was at Cincinnati, they met and they're really good friends. So that's how we connect with Dusty. And then Todd uh, did our radio games when I was at South Florida. And while he was doing Tampa Bay Rays. So Todd was always trying to get me to come to the Tampa Bay game. And I told him I'm an Astro. <laughs> <laughs> but I did take my kids to a few games. And I do like Joe Madden. And, uh, when Todd got the job with Houston, I was coaching at Virginia Tech, and he called me and he said, you know who the new voice of the Astros is? And I said, no, I have no idea. He said, it's me. And I told him, I said, you're about to be on the ride of your life. <laughs> and he, he was. Well, yeah. <laughs> So, you, say, you see that jersey though? Yeah, Carrera. That jersey? Carrera. That's what you're from, talking about? It's not from the 2017 World Series. He said he got it signed from the 2017 World Series. Yes. So let's do this. Let's jump right into it. I got to know in terms of you guys' relationship, because I'm obviously the friend on the outside looking in, and you guys' relationship has gone on, seemed like, for years. Uh, talk to me about your relationship with Coach Kadar. Well, how it started. Well, he's got to give the beginning. Yeah, so in 1983, I graduated from high school. And a teammate of mine, Kevin Newman, uh, 
we played basketball together since seventh grade. And he signed with Southern University in Baton Rouge. And so Andy Stoglin was the head coach. And he was coming to all our practices, all our games. After he signed Kevin, he asked me if I wanted to come try. And so I came to Southern University in the fall of 1980. And my academic coach was Roger Cato. So I met him when I was 18 years old. Now, what was that relationship like meeting Roger Kadar at 18, a big guy with this stature, full of life, when he just, oh, young man, how are you doing? And what was that like to deal, to meet up with a Roger Kadar at 18? Well, I think uh, with Roger being a graduate of Southern, and then here comes me, <laughs> a 5'10 white guy. I had. I'm, I'm going to ask you that too. Being a five ten white guy at a historically black college, and then you come up and meet Roger Kadar. <laughs> I think he was looking at me like, like, who is this guy? And what is he doing here? He probably thought you were Creole, you know. <laughs> he told me. Hey, he told me. He said. Uh, he said, "Come to my office." Mm -hmm. And so I sat down, and he said, "Rock, what are you doing here?" And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, there's only three white people on campus. <laughs> there's a girl from Baton Rouge that's on a full computer science scholarship. And there's a guy that's on a full ROT scholarship and you. So I told him the story. I said, Coach Stoglin asked me to come. I was there to further my education and try to play basketball. Well, we appreciate you for coming to Southern University and getting your education. And Rock, Coach Kato, you ain't had to ask him what you're doing here, man. You could have said, oh, welcome. We'd love to have you. He want to know what the hell you doing. Well, he was the well, actually, hey, After I got in a couple of fights on the court, uh -huh. he said, whatever you need, you come see me. All right. Hey, you were the first. You know what's so interesting, uh, Rock? is that you were the first white kid to come and try out or try to play at Southern on the basketball. You know, I think maybe they had had someone in baseball, and I'm not sure, but certainly not football. But so you broke a lot of ground when you came in, you know, and you were just one of the boys. You didn't walk around with your head down. You walked up with your head hanging high. I, I really enjoyed my time there. And it, it taught me so much. The people treated me great. Uh, it, it was just a, a very positive experience. I think it has helped you so much too in the different places you've been and your ability to recruit the black athlete because you've always been a black kid. You grew, you grew up in a, a mixed community. You, your friends were black growing up. So you'd never had an issue of having to learn that black kids were no different than you. No, and you know, I, my parents, you know, we, we saw no color. You know, good people were good people. That's right. And that's, that's how I grew up. And that's how I've been my whole life. Well, let's jump into this. Let me ask you this, man. I see all that Texas A&M behind you. What's going on with you these days? Um, you know, like Coach said, I, I think coming to Southern made me realize that I wanted to be a coach. And I transferred from Southern back to Lamar University and graduated and began my coaching career with a lot of advice from, from Andy Seidman and Coach Cato. So I've been a lot of different places. Centenary, Tulane, Wyoming, Memphis, uh, Lamar is an assistant, Lamar is the head coach. 
South Florida, Virginia Tech, East Carolina, and now Texas A&M. You sound like a coach. Yeah. <laughs> You've been a lot of places. <laughs> but it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead, coach. Yeah, but, uh, you know, that experience, being in all those different places, have really been a good good building ground for you because you and Coach Williams, you know, were able to hook up, I guess, at Virginia Tech. That's why you're first. Y'all yeah, first. so when I, when I was coaching at Centenary, I was, I think in my second year, uh -huh. and I was 25 years old. And Buzz was a freshman at Navarro College. And that's when we met. And we became really good friends. And I tried to always help him because he was a manager. I had been a manager. And we were, just became really close. And uh, my first year at Lamar, he was in his first year as a head coach at the University of New Orleans. We actually played. And when he got the job at Marquette, he asked me to come a couple of times and I didn't want to give up the head job. And so whenever he got the job at Virginia Tech, I came with him. I was there the first four years of Tech. And then I went to East Carolina for three years. And then he asked me to come back at AM. Now you're back, you're in the SEC. Whoa, well, I tell you, y'all what y'all pretty good right now. What y'all seven and oh right now? Seven and one. Seven and one, okay. Doing pretty good. Now is basketball Try. divided into east and west in basketball in the SEC or it's all in one. No, it's just all one. It's all in one. Okay, it's not like football and baseball. Okay. Well, Steve, let me so ask Alabama's you this. Alabama's eight zero, mm -hmm. and we're tied with Tennessee at seven and one. Because I'm an Arkansas Razorback fan, so I'm just gonna put that out there to you, Steve. I, you know, I, Texas A&M, it is what it is. But I, I love the Razorbacks. I, I paid attention. I was looking for Texas A&M to be in the the Big 12 SEC uh, matchup this weekend. They weren't one of the participants in it. But when you look at the matchup with the Big 12 and the SEC and what we saw this weekend, what was your thoughts? Especially when we saw uh, you saw some games like Missouri beating Iowa State, but then at the same time you saw on the other end a struggling Oklahoma team get a victory over Alabama who a lot of people think are the best team in the nation those ups and downs in those matchups man what did you see this weekend I, I think it's hard when you're in your conference and then you break from the conference to play those games and then go right back in the conference play mm -hmm. so you know we weren't in it we played Vanderbilt at home a conference game so uh, we kept our SEC rhythm. And I'm going to ask you this, too, because I see that you put together top 25 recruiting classes at places like South Florida, Tulane, Memphis, Lamar. Uh, when it goes into recruiting, what is it that you have in terms of that it factor? They, obviously, the young folks say you got the sauce. What is it about you being able to go into the homes of young people and being able to get high-level talent and being able to bring to places like a South Florida, a Tulane, or Lamar that ultimately probably wouldn't get that type of talent? Uh, my oldest daughter asked me that one time. <laughs> you know, how, how have you been able to last this long and and do a, a good job? And I told her, I said in one word, honesty. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you, you, you go in, you try to develop a relationship and build some trust and let them know that everything that you're saying is the truth and that you're gonna really take care of them. I think a lot of times for us, we talk NIL a lot on the 
football side and the transfer portal. But for you in the basketball world, what is NIL and what does the transfer portal look like now uh, for basketball more so? Because you hear the football talks nonstop. But I think there's a big world of outside of football that we don't really get enough to hear about. And especially from a guy like you, who's a high level recruiter of when you have to go into the house or the home of a young man and have to entice him to come to that school. But you got so much in terms of, like I said, the transfer portal in NIL. Well, the NIL it is what it is. And we're not really that involved as coaches but it's there. And the transfer portal has changed recruiting forever. So it's really hard to go into November in the early signing period and know what you really need. Yeah. Because in the spring, you know it's gonna be speed dating it's speed uh, dating is that what you got <laughs> speed dating i like that that's what it's like yeah because it's hard now to keep a guy on campus especially if a guy feel like he's not going to get that starting role or things just doesn't seem because back in the day it used to be you would have to toughen it out uh you would have to really fight to get to that starting position that starting role but now because of the option and the ability to just uproot and go somewhere else that'll possibly sell you that idea that hey you don't have to sit behind nobody you can come here and be an immediate starter you know does that make having to cater to kids especially when you have high level talent that you just say it's not your turn yet if you just be patient it'll fall into place for you does that make it hard in the culture realm I think it does make it hard, but I think Coach Williams does a really good job of building a culture and all the things that we do to develop these guys on and off the floor. So I think that helps us with our retention, mm -hmm. but I also think it helps us in the portal because we can't recruit everybody. They have to fit what we do. That's right. Listen, I know you have to go to a meeting and you're giving us the time. When, when do y'all come and play LSU? Uh, hang on one second. Yeah, we're going to wear 11. That look good. 11? Ooh. I should be here. I'm going to try to. Seem like I've got a commitment not to be here. But I look forward to, uh, if, if I'm here, because the parents in the area, they do a good job of cooking good food when y'all come yeah, to so we have, <laughs> I love we it. We have three kids from Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Oh. Dexter Dennis from Baker. That's a good uh, ball Tyree player. Bradford from McLean, McKinley. And then Solomon Washington from uh, New Orleans. I watched the Dexter kid from Baker High School. He went to Wash uh, Wichita State. Uh, initially, but I remember watching him at Baker. Man, he was one hell of a ball player at Baker. He's been absolutely incredible for us. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Incredible. Sounds good. Hey, Rock, thanks so much. I know you got to run to a ten thirty meeting. But we appreciate yeah, we get, you. We have to go to this ten thirty. Hey, we have to go to this ten thirty meeting to get ready for. Arkansas. Let's go Razorbacks. <laughs> hey, all right. Sorry, Rock. Until we play tomorrow night. I'll be watching. Trust me. I'll be watching. You know what? I got your number now. I'll shoot you a text. How about that? <laughs> Six o'clock on ESPN2. Oh, I'll be watching, okay? Thank you, guys. Hey, thank you, Rock. Thank you for coming on, man. Yes, sir. All, all right. right. Let's get ready to take a break. We'll come back. We'll continue more of the conversation here. Chopping up with Kato, all right? Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Looking to get some keys made, luxury keyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mississippi Baton Road. Trust the expert locks in that effort for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take, Take your fun full, full throttle with, with a single, single touch. touch. There, there are places, places to fly high, 
swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, you're more than a playground. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in as a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. FlyBTR.com. Have a passion? We've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Toyin. Roadrunner's four generations strong and home road right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in as a breeze, and non-stops and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. FlyBTR.com. With, With over 60 years, years of combined experience, experience Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett, Barnett bring a wealth, wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're, you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. All right, we're back. More chopping it up with Kadar. Of course, I'm Perry White. It's Roger Kadar. And I'm going to tell y'all because he's telling me. And he didn't say it today. But that's good because he know I got it. Subscribe. Hit the button. Look, he looking at me. You didn't know what I was going to say, did you? No. <laughs> Hit the subscribe button and get the notification every time we go live and tune in with us. Uh, we try to do this each and every Monday. Uh, but sometimes things happen. And, you know, yesterday, were you somewhere staying still with all that torrential downpour that came down yesterday? I was at home. Didn't leave the house. Didn't leave the house. It rained all day. All day. All day. What was your weekend like, Coach? Weekend was good. Mm-hmm. Just hung out a little bit? Hung out a little bit. Uh, Saturday, I made a couple of runs. But, you know, Sunday, I was delegated to the house. Saturday was one of the days why I love Baton Rouge so much. Baton Rouge is, if you love sports, it is a sports crave town. Amateur uh, sports. Amateur sports. Of, yep. You want the profession, you got to go right down the road to New Orleans. But you had BRCC, Baton Rouge Community College, uh, just 
started the season in baseball, so I went over to a baseball I game. Saw that. I they, wish I had known that. Mm-hmm, over at Pete Goldsby Field. Right. Me and you're going to have to go to some games sometime. How about yeah, that? How about that? Over at Pete Goldsby, you know that field well. And uh, LSU had a game in the Big 12 SEC matchup against Texas Tech. And then Southern had a huge game for the number one spot in basketball in terms of in the SWAC. All great games. So I had a weekend that was full of sports. And then, of course, yesterday the NFL had the opportunity to watch my teams, the Chiefs. But then one of my boys, shout out to my boy Kedrick Taylor, director of bands at Southern. He's an Eagles fan. So I went to support the Eagles, and he supported me with the Chiefs. So, But we won't have so much support in the Super Bowl when the Eagles <laughs> play the team. <laughs> I think that's what made sports so beautiful when friends can agree to disagree mm-hmm. and still be friends, you know. It is. Uh, and then, you know, now we're looking forward to uh, this week. Like Steve just said, I'm looking forward to the game tomorrow. I'm an Arkansas fan, so I like the Razorbacks. Razorbacks take on Texas A&M. I'll be paying attention to that. But now we get ready for the Super Bowl. Uh, you got NBA basketball going on. I watched the game Saturday as well. The Lakers and Boston Celtics. You know, historically, that has been a great matchup when you talk about NBA legends and just the history of championships. Uh, what did you ever get a catch of that game with at towards the end? With something funny happened in this I game. I didn't see the game at, at all. Okay, so LeBron James wanted a foul at the end of the game, in which it was a clear foul if anybody watched this time expired. But Patrick Beverly, who is also an Arkansas Razorback, as we all know, he is a character. Yeah. So as they explaining to the referees in terms of what happened, he goes and get a camera from one of the photographers and brings it to the referee to show him that it was a foul. They gave him a tech okay. for that. I, but it was comical because you just can't pa- do that. You can't do it. But when you got a guy like Patrick Beverly, man, you never know what you're going to get. But I have never seen where a guy went and brought the camera back to the ref and was like, man, this is that was a foul. How did you miss that? They weren't playing that at all with uh, Patrick. No, you can't embarrass. Try to embarrass. <laughs> See, this is the kind of stuff that could cause a problem with fans against the ref. Uh huh. That, well, that happened. That's, I'm an official high school football official. It don't matter, damn if I do, damn if I don't. Right. I'm always going to be seen as wrong, right, right. you know, because there's going to be a side that's going to lose that say it was because of me they lost. That's right. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful and protect officials to make sure those kinds of things are not taking place, mm-hmm. uh, you know. And that's what the human mistakes of, that's why you, I love that kind of stuff because you got, the human element. Yeah, human error occurs. It occurs, there, it, yes. There are times where, you know, I got two eyes. I got four on the day, if y'all can see. That's four of them. So I can see pretty good. But there's times I just miss things. Oh, yeah. You know, you just you yeah. just miss it. Yeah. Right? I was watching the program, and there was an accident, a shipwreck that happened. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple of survivors. And they were interviewing the people who survived. And the person doing the interview said, you have to interview people. As soon as you can, because the mind doesn't remain remember everything mm-hmm. that took place. So once you, you if you can re- interview them as soon as the, you're able to rescue them, you'll get a pretty good idea what they saw. Yeah, you come down off that adrenaline high, and then you start to settle in. Then things don't quite seem to be yeah. what they were. It starts to get a little foggy and cloudy. Where right. you know, I think I thought. You know, but other than that, and you telling Steve talking about they make pretty good food down here, man. They they gonna do some cooking. You know, you can't mention food around me and just move on from that. No, the, what happens when they play? They because they have kids from the area. Mm-hmm. The parents go cook and bring the food to the hotel mm. after practice. They go and eat. Okay, and they invited me. Coach Williams invited me to come. Okay, said, "Come on, coach. You you in the family now." <laughs> you know. So, yeah, I really, oh, the food was really good. They know how to burn. They, they do? Oh, yeah. Those mothers know how to burn, though. Now, are you down to go to a BRCC baseball game with me? Yes, I am. Brock has continued. He said, man, you're going to have to bring Coach with you. I said, man, if I can find some time to get him out here, I will get him out here. Yeah, as long as it's a, a day game works better for me. Mm-hmm. And a weekend, I mean, if it's a Saturday or Sunday, Saturday is better. Mm-hmm. So keep that in mind. I got you. You know. I don't like driving at night that much anymore. Yeah. That's one of the reasons, you know, and I live in Zachary, so that means I would have to come a distance. 
So that's the only thing. I got you. Respect. You know. Yeah. You no know, driving at night, and for sure, probably not in the rain. No. Yeah. Only if I have to. Can I ask you this? Because you're you're a little older than me. And I can recall, especially with the storms there yesterday, uh, I can remember back in the day, especially like being around my grandmother and older people then, when it stormed, they wanted you to unplug and cut off everything yeah. in the house. Were, were you like that? No, but I've seen people <laughs> like that. No, when my wife was alive, she was like that. Really? Oh, unplug this, this. You know, because especially if it's thundering and lightning. If it's raining, it's no issue. Mm -hmm. Unless you go flood and then they don't want to... The thing to electrocute anyone. That was the philosophy. But no. Uh, yeah, we almost used to have to sit in silence when it was storming. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, cut but, everything off and just sit there. And I, was, I used to hate that. And if, it doesn't make <laughs> sense. You know, it really, you're inside. If lightning is going to hit you inside, that's a great story. A hell of a story. Hope you, know, you live to tell about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you know, today is my birthday, by the way. Happy birthday. Good to you. Good to me. It's good to you. Happy birthday. You want to tell the people how old are you today? 23? No. Mm. I'm a lot older than that. You remember 23? Not really. I remember <laughs> my 20s, but not necessarily 23. Well, happy birthday, coach. Thank you, Mr. White. What are you doing today for your birthday? Not a lot. Not a big steak dinner or anything? A cake? You know what? I may do that. I may go eat me a steak. Dinner. Get you a good old steak. I was thinking about going and cook one myself, but are you you rather cook it or you rather go out and be served? You know, I can cook it the way I want. Mm. You know, if 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 whole food has got the t uh, the filet mignon, Ooh. you know, they they were out. I went to try and get one Saturday, and they were out. They didn't have any. Whole Food, we need a sponsorship for Coach. Make sure y'all got them steaks on deck for him. So if y'all listening, come on in. We need that. We need that sponsorship. All right, come on, give us, just spend some advertisement dollars with us. All right, just put a plug in for you, Coach. So you make sure you get them steaks all the time. I might have to buy them, my man. <laughs> they ain't giving no steaks. You know. For you, what is birthdays like? Cause uh, you know, although holidays mean something for a lot of people, uh, for me. As I've gotten older as a child, birthdays meant a lot because I think it was just the idea of wanting friends and just wanting to do things because you saw other people doing it. But you get older, and, and for me, birthdays is just, you know, I, I enjoy the what they say, another year around the sun. But, you know, I, I, I'm just not the biggest celebrator of birthdays. What about for yourself? I've never. Yeah. Never been in a, you know, I understand. And for some people, it's nothing to me. It's another day, mm -hmm. and but I don't. But for some people, it's very important, and they don't have a lot in their lives that you and I have. So that's why birthday becomes important. That'll mm -hmm. be something they can wrap their arms around. You got me. I've had a lot of stuff in my life, and that's more. That's been enjoyable. Uh, coaching and helping kids, seeing kids grow. From where nobody believed in them, and they they were able to achieve a lot of things. Those all been joyful things in my life, you know. Uh, and some of the thing was to see me uh, come from where I came from, and and be able to do a lot of things that was unimaginable, but I was able to do them. You know what I'm saying? When I'm able to now think about, I really enjoy that. Because just like that book, Against All Odds, I did do a lot of stuff against all odds. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so those are the things that gives me a lot of joy. So not necessarily a birthday, but achievements, helping people have given me a lot of joy when I think about them. You know, a life for you, uh, I think a lot of people know you as Coach Roger Kadar. But probably family know you as Roger Kadar. Uh, and for you to celebrate your birthday today, another year here on this earth, what is something that you think for the people out there that know Coach Roger Kadar but don't know Roger Kadar, what is something about Roger Kadar that you, you think the people have never known or never seen in you? That's a hell of a question. 
That's really a hell of a question <laughs> for me to answer. I mean, that's a really good one, though, mm-hmm. Perry. Uh, that's well, and I think I've mentioned them. That what I'd like for them to know is that the things I've done for for young people and people in general. You know what I'm saying? I've tried to do good things for them. Like, does Roger Kadar have a, a a favorite music artist? Does oh, Roger oh, Kadar okay. uh, have hobbies that nobody would think? Like, you know, if you was a rock collector, like, I didn't know Coach Kadar was a damn rock collector. You know, like. <laughs> I am an art collector. I do collect art. Really? I like art. And uh, I don't own a lot, but I, I have some. Mm-hmm. Uh, and music, I love jazz. Mm. I've got some really. Uh, uh, the vinyl uh, albums mm-hmm. with jazz, they don't make that anymore. And I've got a collection of those. And older jazz, 40, 50, 60, 70 years ago. And I do have that. You know, I've got some some jazz music. Never gets old. Stanley Term Team, uh, Al Jarreau, uh, Blackbird, Donna Bird. Oh, my goodness, it go on and on. Les McCann. I mean, those are people a lot of people haven't heard, but they play really good music. Yeah, I like, uh, of course, the Miles Davis, John Coltrane. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And I've got I've got all of those albums that I have them secure in my house. What does jazz take you to? When you listen to it, does it take you to a place of, like, peace? Or what does it do? Like, you do you just feel like this... You no matter what the world gives, I can go home, put on jazz, and then just. Well, I used to listen to it when I was an assistant basketball coach mm-hmm. in 1981. Every morning, my wife brought me a very expensive turntable to play. Back then, four hundred some dollar was a lot of money for us. Oh yeah, a lot of money. But she bought it for me because she said it'll last forever, and. Uh, so what happened? I, I there was a Stanley Term team. Vera Cruz, Satsumota, Satsu, Satsu, Satsu. Every morning I played that before I went to to work. Mm-hmm. You know, my wife would be in the back sleeping, and I would listen to it in the living room, and it got my day started. It was every day I did it. I don't do it now. But does that bring you back to a, like what they say, uh, like a nostalgic moment? Does that bring you back sometimes as you think about it? Or if you hear certain songs, it puts you right back into a certain place where you can remember it just as vivid as today? Yeah. Yeah. I went, I visited uh, a city in Colombia. And uh, Santana had played a song. Mm-hmm. He wrote a song and played that song, and I can't think of it right now. And I went to that city at night. It was a beautiful city. Medellin, the lights light lit up, and the city was alive. And I could hear the music playing, you know. And I thought about Santana. <laughs> you know, so it's just so beautiful when you you can get in places like that. Who would think in South America? That the most beautiful city I thought I've been in was that city. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got me? A country that has a bad reputation. And boy, until you get there, you got me? Yeah. You know, so you that thing you watch on TV, believe some of it, but not all of it. There you because go. Because they only show you a small fraction of it. Mm-hmm. Okay? If they're trying to paint a bad picture, they're going to show you the worst of it. So I got to go there and see it for myself. You ought to. I will, man. You're going to have me go to South America one day uh, coming up soon. What we got to do, I got to go take a break right quick. So let's get ready to do that, and we'll come back. We'll pay some bills, and then we'll finish out the conversation. We're chopping it up with Kato. All right? Catch y'all in a second. Looking to get some keys made? 
luxury key or a wide variety of new and used safe, then look no further than the trusted choice of African safe and hard. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mississippi Baton Road. Trust the expert locks in that effort for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or maybe the old bell ring. Your targets are inside. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that, too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in as a breeze, and non-stop and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com Passion, we've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud, or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights, gravitate towards something out of this world, even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life, or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Brack, we're more than a playground. Hey, Coach, Coach Roger, Roger Kador here. here. There's, There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. business. When, when I need a toll, I call Roadrunner Road Toy. Roadrunner is full generation strong, strong and home road right, right here in Baton Rouge. Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's, There's no, no job too large, large or too small. Call Roadrunner Road for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just, just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Getting a letter from the IRS with your old back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. It is time to trade in your isolation for celebration, to break out and get away. And at Baton Rouge Metro Airport, you'll get away a lot quicker. BTR is way closer, more convenient, with easy parking, check-in as a breeze, and non-stop and short hops to anywhere you want to go. So get back to your life and be quick about it. Baton Rouge Metro Airport, it's about time. FlyBTR.com With over 60 years of combined experience, Kathy Sherburn and Anna Barnett bring a wealth of knowledge and excitement to the framing industry. Keeping strong to the Louisiana culture, Acadian Frame and Art has numerous local artists and sports team memorabilia for their customers to choose from. Whether you're creating a gallery-like setting in your office or simply looking for some fun art for your kids' playroom, Acadian Frame and Art is your one-stop picture framing spot. Call 225-927-6129 or go to www.acadianframe.com. All right, we're back with more Chopping It Up with Kadar. I'm Perry White. Of course, he's Roger Kadar. Get this thing going, but before we do, be sure to hit that subscribe button right there on the bottom of the screen. Uh, get that notification bell every time we go live and continue to support. It's happy birthday to Coach Roger Kadar today. It's his birthday. He just switched it up, got the glasses on for us, finna throw the hat on. There you go, birthday there swag. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's what I was waiting on right there. You know, coaches, you celebrate your birthday today. Most of all, it's getting into the Mardi Gras season now. Uh, are, do you celebrate Mardi Gras? You like Mardi Hell Gras? Hell no! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Hell no. Really? Man, you got to be out of your head. I'm out of my head then. You Listen. think I'm going where people throwing bees and people hurting people to grab them and why, looking at people right on the floor? Yes, me. That's you. Yes, me. That's not me. <laughs> I don't have a lot of activities. I'm a basic kind of guy. That ain't what. The last time I went to... Uh, uh, Mardi Gras was 1976. Well, damn. 1976, my sister uh, uh, asked me to go with her, and we went in New Roads. Mm -hmm. And I remember it. New Roads, I went to Mardi Gras and New Roads for the first time last year. It was a good time. I like a good country Mardi Gras. Everything ain't got to be so New Orleans and so big city, mm -hmm. but I enjoy it. I'm actually going to a Mardi Gras this year in Plaquemine, so I will try that. And what I like about Mardi Gras is good food, it's good drinks, and a lot of people like to have a good time. Now, when you were growing up, where you from, was Mardi Gras a thing? Yes. Yeah, Mardi Gras was big, you know, and I'm sure I went as often. I never got any enjoyment out of it. Really? I, it didn't. It, there ain't a lot of things that get me really... A good music concert, something like that. I can go, but now with so many people crazy shooting up, I'm not going in no crowd like that. No, nah, I understand, you know. So, but that's what things I, you know, but I like going to to think to art and craft shows, those are the kind of things that give me I like going to see. You like uh, Zydeco music? No, it's okay, it's all right. Now, you know, when I'm out of the country. I do visit a lot of uh, different kind of things, go to museums and stuff, mm -hmm. because you want to see the history. So I do do that kind of stuff. You ever been down into the islands, uh, the Caribbean, to a carnival? If I hadn't been here, do it here, you know damn well. I well, it's different there. It's different. I don't care how different. <laughs> I ain't going. It's like asking me if I've been to Brazil. I see you. <laughs> I, I see you some videos of what it's like, man. You might see the videos and might say, you know what that sound like. I'm not going. It's not going to change. Me. It's not. It's not. No, I'm not. <sighs> this hat today. What about it? You know, I always ask you about your hats. Uh, Ecuadorian. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. Just that. Uh, Central America, right? South America. South America. Yeah. Uh, it's right on the Pacific Coast. Okay. You know, it's like California. And I try to make people understand the only difference is it's on the eastern coast. California is on the western coast of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. and, but everything is the same, just different names. That's it. The terrain is everything. California has desert, mountains. You got me, got trees. Ecuador's desert, mountain, beautiful trees. You know, they grow a lot of flowers there, beautiful flowers and vegetables. I mean, the flowers are so beautiful there. They, they, they rival Colombia with flowers. Mm -hmm. Colombia is known for these flowers. But the thing is, they're next, they're connected to the, each other, so you could see the connection there. Mm -hmm. So, but no, that's that's the connection there. You know, for a lot of people, they don't realize, uh, and they probably do. You're not the biggest social media user, but you get a lot of love on social media. I do. You do. So, if like if I cut clips of this and this Roger Kadar talking, oh man. Hey, coach. Good job, coach. Say, oh, man, I love that, coach. What do you say to the people? Give the people something out there that's supporting that watch so I can clip this, uh, that support Roger Kadar. Well, hey, we, you keep supporting us. And what is going to happen, you allow us to prolong this thing. And I'm going to be able to bring you so many more live experience and wonderful experience that other people don't talk about. I'm trying to give, talk about experience that everybody could literally enjoy. Not just a segment. Someone my age may not want to go to to uh, 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 Mardi Gras or something like that. But I'm gonna bring you about uh, uh, some situation and put you in a place where someone your my age can go and enjoy themselves because you want to have a nice place and enjoy yourself without the riffraff, you know. So that's basically we're gonna bring 
great stories as we go down the road. And I'll be doing more things, and it's going to be more about the USA, too. <laughs> uh, as I move around, we'll be doing more things. We'll give you a lot of information that's going on. Do you have a favorite city in America? I tell you, Atlanta used to be. Oh, man, that was the place. Yeah, it used to be. That used to be my favorite city. Uh, <laughs> Oh, that's a good one, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I sort of like, I like Miami too, but mm-hmm. Miami has gotten a little too big for me. Yeah. What's going on there? They didn't commercialize Miami all the way now. Yeah, you mm-hmm. know. So, and Orlando, it's not a bad place. It's not bad for me. You sound like a, a tropical guy. Huh? You a tropical guy. You like places with that tropical climate, uh, palm trees, I take it. You a palm tree lover? I like that, yeah. but I, I got to, you know what, I love Denver when at the times I've been there, mm-hmm. clean, fresh air, you know, the only bad thing about Denver right now is that they have a lot of mass shooting, Yeah, that's concerns, concerning, you know, and it's too and, cold for and, me, and San Diego, but there is a place, an island right off of San Diego where a lot of army personnel live, mm-hmm. it's, it's a bridge across, you go to this this island, and I've stayed there. I love that place. I can't remember the name of it. I've heard San Diego is a beautiful oh, place. No, it's really beautiful. I got up early in the morning. Many army people walking. They did their walking. I did my walking. You know. I'm more. Of, I, I'm a tropical guy. Uh, so South Louisiana does it for me. For a lot of people, it may not, but for me, it does. I said I was close enough to at least get near a palm tree. So Baton Rouge does have a few palm trees around. New Orleans, anywhere there's a palm tree, you pretty much kind of got me. All right. Really? Uh, yeah, I love palm trees. Something about it just puts me in a place, uh, and that's why I love Florida a lot. But uh, the Miami has kind of gotten too big. It's over. Uh, everybody knows about it. Everybody, uh, I guess you could say, can uh, typically afford to do it now. It used to seem like it was like a a bubble. You know, only a select group. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of out of the Miami. I like the Tampa side of things. I went to the other side of the state, the west side of the state, uh, the Tampa, the Clearwater yeah, Beach. Yeah, yeah, you like Clearwater. Oh, man, I love Clearwater. That's one, that's my, one of my vacation spots. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoy good weather where I don't like wearing winter clothes anymore. Been there, did that. I hate putting on the heavy coats and the jackets and the Tims. I've shoveled enough snow in life. All right, I've scraped off enough windows and had to warm up plenty of cars in the morning before I went somewhere. I'm over it, you know. I want to be somewhere where the weather at any point maybe at a pool could be an option. Now, I'm a pool guy, you know. I love to go out by the pool, enjoy the palm trees, maybe listen to some jazz and put myself in some tranquil place. But that's the type of guy I am. So when you start to paint these pictures to me for me of Ecuador and Colombia and all of these places, that sounds like that's right up my alley. Well, they could be. You know, and if you say uh, uh, Cartagena, Colombia would work much better for you mm-hmm. because it's more tropical than Medellin. Medellin is inland. I take some tropical weather and some beautiful women. Oh, you you're going to have plenty of that. Oh, you got me. And you probably love to dance, and if you can do the salsa, you'll be okay. That's why I meet one of those beautiful women. She teach me. I may not be the best. Yeah, but you'll be okay. Yeah. You're, you're close. I, I, you're getting it. I get it. See, the thing that you know, you find out about women from latin america or central america or south america they go out thir- that night out on thursday friday saturday uh-huh. those are the nights they go out and they do. on friday night they don't go out maybe until 10 11 o'clock so i gotta be ready we're going all night and they and i don't it's amazing <laughs> it's just you know i'm at 10 o'clock i'm ready to sleep and they're just coming out uh-huh yeah. Can you salsa a little bit? You could you do a little step or two? I did dance in, 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 in uh Columbia. Okay. I did go to a club and did some dance. Okay, you had a good time then. Yeah, did yeah. good time. Really did. I mean, you know, and dancing is big there. And see, this is something that people may not know about Roger Kadar, that Roger Kadar can dance. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a great dancer, but I <laughs> dance there. But uh, you know, uh I enjoy, you know, I remember when my wife and I first got married mm-hmm. and we used to dance in in the house though mm-hmm. we would dance in the house we didn't go 
never went to a club, but we would dance in the house and, you know, and that's the way when you first marry, you're supposed to enjoy your spouse and spouse enjoy you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You can do things in a private setting. You got to, mm -hmm. you know, so, yeah, but dancing was a thing. And I remember uh, this first year we were, we had just got married and we, a sister lived in Atlanta. So we stopped in Atlanta for a couple of days. And uh, obviously the sister cooked and we ate and they were playing music and we danced and they, her and her husband just thoroughly enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. They thought it was the most beautiful thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. What is the rest of your week looking like? You're celebrating your birthday today, but then you got the rest of the week ahead of you. It's just I've Monday. I got the Hall of Fame in, I'm glad you asked. The Hall of Fame in uh, in Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll leave on Thursday. And the event happens Friday. You and Ricky Weeks. Yeah, Ricky Weeks and I are going mm -hmm. in. And it's a big event. Uh, <clears throat> this is one that, you know, I'm really honored. All of them are really good. But this one, when you start talking national, hard to get in. You know, you got, you figure, it's three, over 300,000. How many co colleges you think play baseball in the United States? Too many. D1, D2, D3, NEIA. Junior college. Junior college, high school. When you start putting all of them together, you're talking about a half million? I think it's only two, two or three coaches going in. The other one are baseball players. So you start looking at that is in a fraction, fraction of a percent mm -hmm. of the people who are able to go in every year. So that's why I feel I'm extremely fortunate to be able to go in because that's only a small amount of people get, get to go in. That's a huge week for you. you. Celebrate your birthday Monday, Friday. You'll be inducted into the College Baseball Hall of Fame. You and, of course, Ricky Weeks, who played under you, Golden Spikes Award winner. Uh, both of you guys, legendary, legendary uh, careers. You as the coach, he as a player. And for you guys to go in together, it almost seemed like a, a father son duo or, you know, mentor mentee uh, duo. And so those are things that I say are for the books. That's what you write down in history when you tell the story you talk about you two guys put together and being able to have that tremendous honor congratulations to you first happy birthday to you and as well as congratulations to you on friday i'll be watching if there's a link or something that's up definitely be watching and uh what you gonna wear for that uh that induction well we'll see once i get there but you know if i was an arrogant egotistical guy uh -huh. i would say that i should have been in the hall of fame as a player because mm -hmm. If you look at my record, it says that I'm... Hall of Fame worthy. Right. But, you know, when you do what I did with coaching, the playing part got overlooked. Yeah. Because it was in the moment people remember. Maybe you should talk about a little bit of your playing days and how that prepared you as a coach and give people yeah. a perspective of your playing days. As you, you Do you get a chance to give a speech? There'll be question asked. The, okay. The guy is a narrator or monitor, mm -hmm. whatever. He'll be asking questions, but I'm going to do it a little different. I'm going to say, rather than you ask me the question, I want to talk about some things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do it a little different spin because he can't ask me what I want to really let the people know. Mm -hmm. You see, and I can keep it in the time frame and still give the people what they want rather than he writing something down he wants to ask. Then I'm going to let him ask a couple of questions, but I want to tell him a story. This sounds like the typical Roger Kadar. Yeah, <laughs> I, it's going to be different. See, because I told them I wanted them to play uh, Old Blue Eyes, mm -hmm. My Way, as an intro. The guy said, nobody ever have asked them. There you go. See, I said, I wanted My Way because Frank Sinatra got his, you know how he got his start? Somebody got sick mm -hmm. and they recommend him. So he got recommended and the rest is history. I know we're against the clock. Yeah, that is amazing, man. So happy birthday to you. And congratulations on heading to the College Baseball Hall of Fame. That tremendous. I told you you need to have that I Am Swag shirt on now. You got to let them know, Coach. You better let them know about who is the swag. You the swag. All right? You ain't feeling that? I Am Swag. There you go. <laughs> Say that for the people up there. 
I am swag. There we go. We're going to use what that. he want. Yeah. That's going on social media right there. Hey, we want to thank everybody for tuning in with us today. Man, we'll definitely see you again next week. It's Coach Roger Kadar's birthday today. He's been inducted into the College Baseball Hall of Fame Friday. So you guys be sure to make sure to tune in and bait and watch that. All right. So we'll catch you guys next week. Subscribe. Hey, and we out. I'm M. Swag. I am Swag. <laughs>